Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and I just came back from all of these totally real events. Or maybe I nearly ruined my computer by generating these. I've recently started playing around with AI image generation and because I'm a maker and not a payer, I don't pay any service to use their cloud instance of any AI generation model, I just run it on local hardware. It turns out that takes a pretty toll on your hardware and you can easily mess up all your configurations and drivers and stuff to the point where you have to set up the computer from scratch. That happened. So. Let's build a dedicated AI server. An AI server is a dedicated machine that lives somewhere on your network, does only these tasks, and if you need them, it does it for you and can access all the data from everywhere on the network. And because I want this to be recreatable by you, I don't use any old server hardware or get a good deal on a gaming PC and retrofit that. I'm trying to use this on a single board computer so you can do it on a budget. Well, you can do some basic things on pretty much any computer that can compute stuff. I chose a Latte Panda for this project. There are the Latte Panda Delta, this one, and there's also the Alpha. They have differences in what processor they use, but they are both x86 based. This is the normal computer type that you have in your PC, mainly. Uh, that is because all these uh, image generation uh, programs are usually made with that processor architecture in mind, so I have a bigger chance of compatibility. And I don't use any uh, single board computer out there, I use this one specifically because it has two NVMe ports, B key, M key, E key, depends on the version of Latte Panda you have, and I can connect GPUs to that. So I can run all these models on a GPU, because that is the important computational power, GPU not processing power of the CPU. It looks really funny when you compare your single board computer to the graphics card. <laughs> this thing is almost four times the size. But that's the actual bit that does the work. So we slap all that into a case, make it compatible with each other and with standard computer components, and then see if that contraption even boots. There are different kinds of NVMe connectors. They have different keys. The M, B and E key are very popular. They are basically restricting what kind of component you can put in there. If you have an M key, then this is basically a PCIe connector. You can put graphics cards, for example, or whatever you would put on the PCIe bus on there. The other one is usually used for networking cards, but you can also hook up SATA drives to it. So this is where the storage for our AI server will attach. To make this work, we need more than just one adapter. We need to go from NVMe to PCIe. This will be not an X16 slot, but an X4 slot, which in our case is not problematic. For gaming, this is not ideal. But in our case, we shift the data to the GPU. It has all the time it needs to compute all the data, then gives it back to display. In a gaming setup, you would have constant throughput to all of these PCIe lanes. This is not what we are doing, so it doesn't really matter for us. We then have an extender to the GPU, and we also need to have power connections to the CPU and to the Latte Panda, because I'm using a standard ATX power supply. Uh, I will not have the right plugs on there, so we need to make some adapters from scratch. My server case is pretty standard. It would fit the normal ATX motherboard, but it's not meant for a Latte Panda. So, of course, I have to make some custom brackets to mount my Panda in place. Thankfully, I have my MX Engineering resin, so I can even make them all snap in place or look like injection molded parts, which is also the property that I use for the control panel on the front, you have a little key and you can open that, have access to USB ports, uh, the power buttons and with these blank plates I just replace them with some custom plates and put in HDMI, network and audio connections so I can access all the features of my single board computer from the front for the setup which is done with a local screen and later if I ever need to. The Latte Panda conveniently has headers for uh, the power connection and even for the boot switch. So I can wire them up directly to the case and can power it directly. It's just a matter of a bit of adaptation. Now that everything is mounted inside the case and I've already uh, hooked up power to the fans 
and to the uh, custom fan shroud that I made for my GPU because that one doesn't have an internal fan but we need max airflow for one of these GPU accelerator beasts with 24 gigs of VRAM by the way. We can just try out if this thing even boots. Uh, so it looks like it's kind of booting. Uh, it goes into the BIOS and then tells me there is something wrong with the PCIe bus. I've looked into that and turns out the Tesla M40 GPU that I use, this is an accelerator card for data centers, that this needs a special property of the bus that the Latte Panda does not have, so it's not compatible with that, but that's not a problem for our project because I have a Quattro M4000 already with 8 gigabytes of VRAM, which is still massive for such a project. And I just plug that one in. Also, I have to change the power cabling and we can just try again and see if it boots without a problem this time. Uh, just pushing a button for the boot process is not working as intended. That's just because it's a standard ATX power supply. To hook up a power supply or to make it turn on, you just have to connect the green wire and the black wire, but you have to keep them connected. Usually the PC motherboard does that for you once the boot process has started. Mine doesn't, so that's why I have to make uh, another adaptation. I use a little lever switch that stays in the connected position whenever I pushed it. So this is basically a separate power up for the uh, PSU. And then with the boot button, I can make the Latte Panda boot. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. For the installation of the operating system, I'm just hooking up a screen to the HDMI port on the front. I'm hooking up keyboard and mouse, of course, and my boot medium, which is a USB thumb drive. Which OS are we going to install? Well, all these x86 uh, Latte Pandas are compatible with Windows 10, but who in his right mind would do that? We go with Ubuntu 2204, of course. Uh, okay, if you want to run Windows 10, you can, and you can even get them pre-installed on these Latte Pandas when you buy them. I chose the cheaper one, that the one that doesn't have any EMMC on there. I'm using the Latte Panda Alpha in there in the cheapest variety, which is the budget-friendly option. And I install Ubuntu from a fun drive directly onto the SD card. So in case anything is corrupted, I can just swap out SD cards and keep all the actual data separate on SATA drives. So to run AI image processing software, on a single board computer, you have an operating system that supports all uh, these tools. Ubuntu 22.04, great platform for that. Keep it to an x86 processor if possible. That uh, ensures compatibility. The graphics cards, NVIDIA is preferred very much. Uh, you can run it on AMD graphics card, but be aware that there might be a lot of issues. Some of the models might only run on CPU, which in this case is not beneficial. If you're doing CPU intensive tasks, don't bother with this setup. This is all meant for stuff that runs almost purely on the GPU. Easy Diffusion is a very easy to set up system. It's basically stable diffusion, but packaged in a very easy to handle environment. I prefer this for quick iteration. So you just make a vague concept, type that in, generate hundreds of images, look for stuff that looks right to you, and then uh, regenerate with that image as an input over and over again. So this is very easy if you have like only vague ideas. If you want to do very specific stuff, then you might want to have an automatic 11.11 or Comfy UI installation on there, which is still also possible on here. Uh, please refer to the tutorials on there. I've linked a few that are helpful below. Of course, you also need models to do all this stuff. There are realistic, cartoony, abstract, interior, exterior models, uh, comic characters, whatever you can imagine. There's pretty much, if it exists or if somebody thought of it, there might be already an image generation model out there that fits your need. So you can look through 
a vast repository, be aware that these are huge. They usually have between two and six gigabytes of in size, and you might need a lot more additional models to exactly get what you're after. So I've already trained an AI model on my liking, so on my face and my appearance in general, so it understands uh, when I want Clem, then it's the guy with the glasses and the blue shirt on, and then there's an additional model that uh, tells it this is the face you have to recreate. Crucial step to using your own AI server on your network, you need to enable SSH and you have to connect to it from another computer, so you need to know the uh, IP address. So make a note of that. You could make it static, you could also automate the launch of the AI software on boot, but I don't do that usually because that is already resource intensive. So what I do instead is if I want to use that server, I just turn it on uh, on my normal workday. And if I need it to do something, I log on from my main machine via SSH and start it from there via an alias that I basically just set. So it's easy to, to get it going, do my generations, look at the pictures, pick the one I want, download it to my main machine and use it. Of course, you can just generate pictures of celebrities eating spaghetti like maniacs, but you can also do pretty useful stuff, like put yourself into different situations for commercials, for ads, for editorial content, or if you need motion backgrounds for your videos, you can just generate them instead of looking through catalogs and catalogs of pre-made images. So here are some practical examples that I did with my Stable uh, Diffusion server. Here's a motion background that I also created in Stable Diffusion. Also the animation was done on the AI server. This takes quite a long time because it has to uh, generate a lot of frames for this. Then I imported that into uh, Stable Diffusion, uh, into DaVinci Resolve, which is my editing program that I use to edit these videos. And then I basically added some effects. The image of a bottle of Mamex engineering resin on top give it a bit of transition effects and used AI functionality that is built into DaVinci Resolve to smooth the motion a bit. And the outcome is this, and this took me about 15 minutes. If I would do this with uh, pre-made motion backgrounds and stuff, until I found something that looked exactly like I envisioned with the four quadrants in different colors and stuff, this would have taken me probably a lot longer just to find the right footage. For this project, I used the Latte Panda Alpha. This has, I think, the same processor inside as a 2013 MacBook, <laughs> coincidentally. Uh, I preferred that one. First, for the cost, it is cheaper than the Latte Panda Delta, which has a more modern processor that is more uh, energy efficient. The Latte Panda Alpha has a more standard NVMe layout, so it was easier to find the right adapters for my GPU connection and for the uh, SATA drives. It was really easy to interface the front panel of my case with the Latte Panda, and if you want to have special functionality like launch a specific program by the push of a button, then you can easily do that, and you can also add like lighting effects or whatever you want, because the Latte Panda not only has GPIO like a Raspberry Pi, it also has an integrated Arduino. So there's an 80 Mega 32U4, which is the same processor as on an Arduino Leonardo, and that is already active when the unit is powered. So it didn't even have to boot. You can basically make real-time tasks and only boot the machine when you need to. This means that if I press the boot button, the machine starts, if I press the other button, I could, for example, directly launch the program that I want to use right now and make completely custom function. This is a feature that I really like in this series of computers and we may use that for a lot more other projects. Maybe when I can utilize all this AI tech properly, then in my position, there will be an AI generated clam telling you that I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.